its bond council and authorizing the mayor or city manager to execute any necessary engagement agreements, USDA sewer and water. Mr. Rosen. Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, this is sort of a ditto under item G. Uh, the only thing that's significantly different about this is we don't have a separate uh, financial advisor involved with USDA. Uh, we will probably re-engage uh, Mr. Gonzalez, who did your last rate study, to look at your rates for sewer. And the reason you're required to have a bond council for something like this is, and let me just give you a little tutorial on it if I may, um, you can't go out and do a note and deed of trust like a private corporation can. Uh, you issue debt as a form of a bond because you're a public entity. And what you'll do is a single instrument bond to the USDA pledging your rates from your sewer system or pledging your rates from your water system to redeem those bonds. And so Mr. Uh, Kuhn will serve as the bond counsel for that purpose. Uh, he's one of the few bond lawyers in this part of the state that's made kind of a specialty in assisting in USDA uh, projects over a long period of time. And Ms. Soto and he get along well. Uh, I'm glad there's somebody who does this because again, it's only a bond you can issue for this purpose. It's not a note and deed of trust with which a lot of you have familiarity. So you are required to have somebody who specializes in this area. And I would recommend his approval uh, because we're going to contemplating coming back after this, after I think m and does their study. We're contemplating coming back for a water application. Uh, the approval is for both water and sewer. And recommend approval of this item for the same reasons that we recommended item G. Okay. Mayor, may I say something? Yes, sir. I think Victor is, is uh, done, right? Victor Kiro is done with the uh, Frost Bank? Yes. He just likes to stay in case we <laughs> Just in case you had any question on bond, but otherwise, uh, thank you very much. Victor, you better ask him how he means done. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the confidence. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Kidoga. Will you report to Jeff tomorrow? Please? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. You're just being nice, and you can leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. to appoint a member to the FOIA board. Do we have any nominations? Are we advertising for these uh, boards? Oh, yes, sir. It's on our um, website. We can see it at, uh, in the Western News. We haven't received any new applications. Um, actually, anybody who goes into the mayor's office, she's been passing out applications. Uh, but we don't have any applications at this time. But I did meet with the FOIA board uh, last Monday. And they said they're going to see if they can get somebody to come and join them as well. They did elect our officers on that same topic. Um, I believe uh, Stephanie Moore is now the secretary, and uh, Chris Flores is now uh, the vice president. So they're hoping that um, they can uh, come up with some members and recruit themselves, and so um, we're looking forward to that. But we don't have any other applications at this time. You know what the deal was in this last week? No, sir. The secretary has never received any. I guess I'll go ahead and I'll make the motion to uh, to table this item until next meeting. If they're, if they're having a quorum. They yeah, did have a quorum. They did. Okay. Um, okay. And I'd like to say that they had officers and there be, they should be in attendance at your meeting on the 6th of May. And so we can meet them as well. Okay. Let me 
we uh, nominate Kelly Amaro? She had. I have a second. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eric. I have a motion to table. Do I have a second by Councilman um, Lovadius? Nice for that. Second vote. Okay, now you can go. Okay. Let me uh, nominate Kelly Amaro. She had expressed interest. She, I sent her the form. And she never told me she didn't send it back. So let me put her name up for nomination. Can, can you spell that last name for me? A M A R O. Did you get the letter secretary? Secretary. Okay. 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 I have a motion to appoint Kelly Amaro by Councilman Tejada, second by Councilman Ortiz. Councilman Guerrero, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Rodriguez. Yes. Okay, motion carries 4-0. Good job, please, advisor, that she was selected. Thank you. No question, but if you can follow up and find her contact information, we'll let her know. Okay, now on to L, consideration and action to approve the school zone ordinance adding B Street from Highway 181 or 10th Street to County Road 401, first reading. Oh, yes, ma'am. For some time, I think that the, um, the superintendent of schools sent us a letter requesting that they put up cell phone signs for the junior high off of B Street. When we did our research, we realized that we had not ever made that actually an official school crossing area, a school zone. And so for first reading, your attorney has prepared for you um, the first reading. It has a penalty, so it needs to read at least once. And so uh, for second reading, but we need you to approve the first reading. What this will allow us to do is to put signage along B Street as it is an official school zone. Cell phones usage will be definitely restricted in that area according to state statute, but we need to be able to make it school zone first. I spoke to Councilman Nieto earlier today. Uh, he did indicate to us for the record that he wouldn't be able to attend, but he did say that there's actually parents parking on his street as kids run across the street. So we need to be able to have the proper signage in that area and designate it as school zone and then we can actually put up the right signage. But right now it's not designated as school zone. So as it's written, we can't approve it unless because you're asking for uh, Well you have to approve the first reading according to your attorney. It doesn't say the first reading. Yes sir. It's, it says first reading. It should say that on the agenda. On the agenda. It's all okay. right. But first, we're amending the ordinance from 2010. No, actually, we're doing. We're, we're just approving this area as a school zone. And we really need for formality just to read the caption. And you have, you should have the caption in your book there. Well, I'm looking at the ordinance 2015-10, and it says amending. Because there is an ordinance that's already out there that states all of your schools. Okay, so but that still stays in there, and we're just going to add to it. Add to it, yes. We have to have that in place in order to enforce the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody would be kind enough to read it, or Mr. we need to read the caption. An ordinance of the city of Floresville, Texas, amending chapter 72, schedule 3, B of the city's code of ordinance to designate a new school speed zone and establishing an effective. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Ortiz, second by Councilman Guerrero. Councilman Ortiz, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Tejada? Yes. Motion carries, 4 zero. Okay, now on to end. Consideration and action to approve MS engineering recommendation for purchase and installation of storage tanks for the Plaza Well. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Mr. Turk's not here, right? Yeah, Mr. Turk's not here. He had death in the family, and so he has sent a representative, Mrs. Turner, here to uh, present to you. This item was presented earlier, the recommendation when he came, and he said when they were finalizing numbers. So I'll give the podium to the other Mrs. Turner. I'm Nancy Turner. Uh, good evening. And as she said, yes, I'm filling in for Tom Turk, who usually uh, comes to see you all. Um, you have the cost estimate in front of you for the replacement of the plaza uh, tank, ground storage tank. And aware that the existing tank 
needs to be replaced in the uh, previously presented why, uh, maybe last month in March. Um, and then we're recommending the uh, fiberglass tanks from uh, Springs Hill Water Supply Corporation be purchased and installed at this at this site to replace that ground storage tank. Um, we could view these temporary tanks as more of a permanent solution, and the reason I mention that is because we are working on a preliminary engineering report right now for the replacement of that ground storage tank, and we are including these two fiberglass tanks uh, as part of that project in order to hopefully get reimbursement for anything you might spend doing that right now. Uh, does that make sense? If it's included in the, in the PER, then there's hopes that you could get reimbursed. I'm not saying that you would, but you might. Uh, it, it's certainly worth a try. Um, and these tanks are used tanks? Yes, they are used. Um, Inspected and approved? Yes, yes, yes. Let me, let's see. I'll go over um, the cost of them. Let's see. If you're looking at the cost estimate now, um, the first line item for uh, $8,000 a piece, uh, these tanks brand new are $35,000 a piece, and Springs Hill has had a third party uh, appraise these tanks for uh, at least $12,000 a piece, but they said they would sell them to the city of Florida for eight, um, and they would wait to not sell them to anyone else pending uh, council's decision. So, man, but I don't expect that they would, you know, would wait forever, so the uh, decision probably needs to be made very quickly. Um, and along those lines, uh, we've tried to structure this cost estimate so that it could be um, uh, used in a purchase order fashion, if you will, uh, so that it could be installed and, and uh, put into place quickly. Uh, with item number one being its own purchase order to uh, Springs Hill Water Supply for the purchase of the tanks themselves. Then item number two um, could be a separate purchase order for someone to prepare the foundation for those tanks. And then following item number three, um, having a contractor to disconnect the tanks from their current uh, location and move them here to uh, the Floresville Plaza water plant site. Then item number four um, would include all the yard piping uh, at the plant site. Um, we would bypass the current aeration tank that's there. We've done some uh, water test uh, testing and sampling there and have it sent off and it's not removing any of the hydrogen sulfide. Um, we're not exceeding maximum contaminant levels, but we're at maximum. So. Uh, before and after the aeration tank. So it's not removing, it's not doing what it needs to be doing. So what we're proposing is putting in, um, we'll call it uh, an air bubbling feature, if you will, uh, diffusers into these fiberglass tanks. And it should help with the smell and, and odor, tasty odor uh, uh, quality at the tap. Um, so that would be um, definitely a positive move. Um, and then cleaning and disinfection. All of that number four can be in one purchase order there. Um, and contingencies for unforeseen items, of course, and then our fee at the, at the number six. Uh, for a total project cost of 73,600. Um, so we are recommending that uh, council approve the uh, purchase and installation of these tanks. Mr. Turner, how long yes. does the process take for them to take them down and install them over here? What's the whole? The whole process, um, of course, the contractor would have to uh, give his availability, which we haven't requested from him because we don't have authorization yet, and that would heavily depend on him. But if he had uh, no other commitments to tie him up, I would think uh, 30, 60 days. Total yeah, yeah, I think so. You said that a new tank cost thirty-five thousand for 
two tanks. One of these tanks. would be brand new, $35,000, and that's from a tank manufacturer. Which we're still going to need two, yeah. two anyways. Yes, I think so, because they are uh, $32,500 each, and you have an 80,000 gallon tank out there right now, and we're wanting to take that one out of service, so I think it would be wisest to have uh, both. How many gallons is that? The new one or the old? Uh, the, the, existing, the, existing. the existing is 80,000 gallons. And this is going to give us 66, uh, 67,000 gallons. Correct. That's less than that. Correct. Is that still going to be sufficient? Yes. So what if, how much would a 67 or even an eight, another $80,000 tank, how much would it cost? Is, has, has that been... Yes, it has been. Do you have that number? Well, you know, Councilman, if I can remind you of that, and, and the councilman what, here. What I'm trying to, to, to just yeah, kind of Well, we, we tried down. to put it out. I mean, actually, this is the capital expenditure that we had in the budget for $150,000. And then did a design, and we had one proposal that came forward that you rejected because it was over the budget, and our budget was $143,000 is what we had budgeted. So when we tried to design it, and Mary, you remember we were talking about the two tanks and maybe we keep it and salvage it, we just couldn't come up with it. It just wasn't feasible. TCQ has noted us uh, for this particular uh, storage tank. It is in bad repair. We need to do something, and we can't. We need to look at it, and the engineer has spent some time to try to see if we can retrofit the existing tank, put top of it, the roof is really disintegrating as we speak. So what we're hoping to do is just to take it offline. We, we can throw some money at this tank, but it's not going to get us what we can do. We're hoping that the temporary tanks can get us along for another two to three years, and maybe even have to use it even less time if we are awarded some um, funding from the USDA. So that's what, this is part of this process. So some of the engineering costs we're going to be able to recoup and use it as our match for this particular, but this is definitely something that we need to do uh, temporarily so that we can do so. Because we did look at uh, coming in to do uh, a tank and replace it, and we had one bidder, and it was way over budget that one bid, I believe, in excess of $200,000. I was just, you know, calculating just because you have two tanks at $16,000, and then to disconnect the tanks and deliver them, it's $15,000, you know, $31,000. To, you know, for a total cost, and if we can have one, you know, even a little bit slightly higher than that, you know, if, if yeah. it were feasible for us to have a new tank. Yeah. Well, the, the new tank would actually um, have a new tank, and remember, they're going to definitely add on that transportation issue that you would definitely exceed the funds that we have for capital development, for capital improvement project. So this won't require a budget amendment because we've already said that we're going to do a capital improvement. So it's within, way within budget, and it'll help us get to a three to five year period to allow us to either apply or come up with the funding in another matter to apply <coughs> because it's, uh, I know Mary, you should stress the concern. I would, the bubbly effect is really important to me because I think it's going to help with uh, the odor and the taste. And that smell that you see sometimes that you hear and complain of, that should be eliminated. But we do have to do some site preparation, as she mentioned, here to prepare uh, the site itself uh, to accept these two new tanks. Okay, question for turner number one and turner number two. One is one. I know that this topic came up somewhere. I remember hearing something. The existing can be salvaged? Uh, yeah, we, we, we can sell it to somebody for scrap or something? Yes. Or? We are definitely anticipating uh, salvaging that tank once it's down. And that's one of the things that we're going to be asking. And actually, Tom brought that to my attention that they can salvage some of that for the metal. Somebody wants it, we definitely can't use it. So we can make some money off of it, right? The little something? Well, we could probably return to recoup some of this cost that's costing us, but definitely once that's taken down, it's <coughs> salvageable. We're going to do it. Madam Mayor, before you act on this, if you don't mind, because this exceeds $50,000 in expenditure, uh, we need to be careful about whether we're really violating the law by parsing this out into individual items. But if you look at the description that this Ms. Turner has given us, each of these are separate functions, and I believe they're, they're proper to do it as has been recommended. Different POs. With different, different POs for 
each of the one, two, three, four items that are described there. You mean the professional fees, of course, would be a separate item as part of, I presume, their ongoing professional services contract. And that having been said, I do think you need to be cognizant that that report that you talked about needs to be filed of record because you represent the firm that's doing the selling as well as the firm that's doing the buying. So we need to be aware of the fact that one engineering firm is on the selling, representing the client that's a seller, and on the side of the buyer, representing the side that's buying. And I just want to be sure that there's full disclosure to the council so that you understand that the pricing by a third party is an important consideration and validation before you act tonight, if you follow what I'm saying because you're having one firm represent both the buyer and the seller. Now you're making me want to ask another question. Sure. Is there a finder's fee for y'all for finding No, there's it? not, but I, I will tell you that the appraisal on the tanks was done by a third party. No, that's ours. what I want you to say for the record. Right, I, yes, I will gladly say that. Yes, that was done by third I'd party. Like to have that, I'd like to have that furnished to our city secretary sure. so we know sure. that. No, there's no finders fee. So we're legit. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that the disclosure is important that you have it before you act. Okay? For their protection, for whatever. I've seen these problems go go bad. And then they say, okay, well, you had one party representing both sides. So I want to make sure the council knows that. So you will be able to invoice each one separately so that they can issue an individual appeal by coming. If I, if, if I get the invoicing, yes. And is this proposal a not to exceed? Uh, as it's presented here, yes. Yes, but please notice item number five does have a built-in contingency fee like that. So 10%. Engineers, they, they love to come in, they really try to get close, but the wiggle room is a 10%. Well, is that 10% intended to be on each of the one, two, three, four above? Or is that 10% on the whole? My interpretation of that is it's 10% Excuse me. It's five thousand eight hundred dollars to cover any contingency on all of those items, one through four. Uh, not our fee, but there, those there, construction the items. The reason I'm asking the question is there are different contractors that are going to perform those functions, right? Right. So it'd be ten percent of each of those contracts. No. 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 I, I think ten no. percent uh, yeah. spread whole. out over all four items. All right. So you're going to spread that out over the whole. Right. Okay. So that would be the motion.
a budget amendment that's been presented before and it's for the purchase of the truck. I have evaluated the funds and as per uh, Ms. Turner's uh, advice, we found some money on fund 221 for the water that is not going to be used any longer. So we uh, decided to use that fund, that funding for the purchase of this truck. So a budget amendment is not needed. So I'm asking you to go ahead and take no action on it. <clears throat> Where was it taken out of, you said? It's one of the uh, wells that we had budgeted money there to do some repairs, but that is already done. So we had some extra money there. When we did the emergency repair <coughs> of the wells, when we did the emergency repair the $77,000, we had actually ended it, put money aside for from the B well and the hospital well mm -hmm. to do, we're not going to do those because we did an emergency repair at the B-Well, and so we are going to use that fund for that. If you look at a, a memo from Elon, he put the parameters of what he would, the truck would be, because um, he can speak to how quickly those tar those vehicles go. So I believe that the um, parameters are laid out there, and I'll let him speak to those. Mm -hmm. So on, the, on that vehicle, uh, we purchased the uh, vehicles from uh, Bruce Littlefield, a uh, small dealership, a uh, used car dealership on Southwest Military. Uh, he purchased a lot of vehicles from uh, Saws, uh, City of San Antonio, and whenever he has a lot, we can uh, pick it up for six thousand at the most. And but they don't, they don't uh, their turnaround there is maybe one to two days. So we can once we get an approval on this, we can uh, just go ahead and purchase it. You know. Because I can't go in there and give you a price hey, that's like $3,000 because it could be gone tomorrow. You know, there's no such. And I've been dealing with this guy where he purchased about uh, four vehicles from him. And they're pretty good vehicles. And as you can see on this letter, you know, it's going to be uh, 2000 or newer vehicle with less than 100,000 miles. And they go through that vehicle, it's pretty good. They check them out pretty good. I go and test drive them. And, a pretty good vehicle that we've got from it so far. Can we make a motion? Oh, we're asking for no action. Oh, for no action? We're asking for no action. Okay, I still need to understand what, what you were saying. For that for because I'm a little, uh, yes, it's yes, uh, because I'm looking at the sheet that's attached here that is a 221 water and sewer fund, and it has contractual $5,000 into the budget. And then it goes on to capital outlay, capital outlay, and non-capital outlay. So where is that amount that was left over from that amount that you're talking about? You see the highlighted one under the equipment there? I'm sorry. That's where the money's coming from, that $28,000. Okay, so that's the balance from that amount that we have assigned to you. Yes. It's twenty-eight thousand dollars in that. Uh, for you see the Highway 181 Plaza. Well, I don't need to put that money into the Plaza Wells to do the maintenance. You want to replace those things to capital improvement, so I can take the six thousand. So I can take that this point. Okay. I need a vote of no action because if you take it, it has to keep coming back to you. Okay. Take action. So you can vote no action. Motion of no action for item agenda. Oh, oh. oh. You're just going to take no action? Yeah. I don't need a vote, right? No. Let, let the record reflect the council does not require action. Thank you. Now I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to go back to N. Consideration and action to approve budget amendment 2 to purchase a tractor for shredding ordinance 2015-03. Yeah, this is also a returning budget amendment. And on this one also we did some budget evaluation. And uh, we found that on our revenues, because of the time, this has been the third meeting that this budget amendment has been here. So we have 
uh, got some in, uh, additional revenue on this time that we can now use to fund the tractor. So we got two uh, franchise tax that uh, were collected more than what we had budgeted before, giving us 38,886, which it will be sufficient to purchase the tractor. And the budget amendment will be to increase the uh, revenues for that amount and increase the expenditure for the, the same amount. So which tractor are we referring to? The original one presented? That was, yeah, the original. So we didn't, Correct. Yes. So, so we didn't uh, uh, evaluate the option that Councilman Nieto had suggested? Yeah, we looked they at that one. It's, it's <coughs> some of the size. Some of the size of the phone. Uh, yes, I did find it on, online that uh, the one with 7.1 hours on it, it's a New Holland, but it's a 40 horsepower. And we need at least an 80 to a 90 horsepower to pull that shredder that we have. I think he was using that as an, as an example for us to try to find the use. And I did research, I, I called my vendors and all that, and, but I could not find any new tractors. We found one online that was older than the one that we had. And the ones that you did find online were about two to, 5,000 hours on them, you know, somewhere in between there, in which that's a lot of hours on the tractor like that. <coughs> How many vendors do you go through and, and do you use the bike board? I use the bike board. I use a uh, e wall, uh, John Deere, build tractors, these <coughs> tractors, and also cases. And the closed, closed, closed case. <coughs> Well, we're recommending the closed case because of the highway that they're by themselves. The one we have now is closed case. No, it's, open. It, it's open. But we're thinking about, remember, actually on this tractor itself, the driver, they literally found a dead body there uh, along the Highway 181. And so, um, kind of, you know, I mean, okay. so, so, so we literally, we did do the research. We even went on the federal supply in reference to uh, to see if we could find the news, and it was like a 1990 that we found that just wasn't going to meet our needs. The <coughs> distance between Walmart and when you leave the city in the medium of 81 is quite a distance that we need to be able to cut along the easements for Texta, not to mention the other areas that we need to be able to maintain. And we, we cannot use our lawnmowers to do that. The guys have been doing the best they can, but I need to cut these open fields. So we don't have one that's completely enclosed? No. But this one is. The this one, one is. Yeah. This one is. Yes. Is it also an AC truck? Ma'am? Does it have air conditioning on it? Too? They, if it's a closed cab, but they all come with air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So we won't have any trouble with anybody wanting to drive it. No. <laughs> oh, no. To drive the new tractor, they still in my turn on it. Is training going to be? Yes. I, I make sure that every time we purchase a vehicle, I make sure that they come to train. The whole parts department will be trained on it, whatever, whatever department it goes to. That whatever equipment that, that equipment goes to, that department gets trained. Everybody on that department. Because I think it's imperative that you know the people that are utilizing it are being yeah. trained properly. Yeah. That way, yeah. not coming back and you know, like I said last time, you know, the yeah. you know, getting having to repair four lawnmowers or replace four lawnmowers at one time yeah. because they all decide to go down at the same time. Yes. No, I make sure of that, and I even sit on those training. So I can, I'll understand that track a little bit better also. So yes, we do get training. And we will have a training of $1,500 that will be assessed roughly to that. And this company does participate in the buy board as well. Yes. We're ready for motion, Matt? Go ahead. How come on that item it has a minus amount, 12000 Zero twenty-seven ninety-seven. What you highlighted? Because you're moving that money into revenue, so you're moving that money out. So you're going to move that money to highlight. I'm talking about the franchise tax. Yeah, but 
that no, because you're going above what you budget, if you're going above, and then it, it shows it as a negative. But that's actually an increase on revenues. Are we using the, the dollar fee? No, to sir, we're not going to use any of the funds. Uh, that's why we looked at this for the revenue. Uh, the delay has helped us to, uh, to look at those numbers to say that we have received excess revenue, so we're not going to touch that dollar uh, on the water bill. So we're going to reserve that to do some of the repairs to some of our existing parks as had anticipated earlier. Mayor, if there's no more discussion, I'm going to make a motion to approve the purchase of the tractor. Mm -hmm. We have a motion by Councilman Tejada. May I have a second? Second. Yes, sir. May I suggest that on that motion, that not only provide for the budget amendment, but it name the, the vendor that's being selected. Being selected. Okay. Or Eli Mr. Berscone, what is the vendor? The vendor is Eli. Are you getting it from Bill Scratcher? And also, they don't include transportation fees because yes. the tractor is already here. What are we? What's the dollar amount? Um, not sure. What was it? I don't have that. Well, what's the amount we're budgeting? We're budgeting 38, but I believe the cost was 35. 35 or 35. Okay. Uh, Matrix C 38,000, ordinance number 201504, uh, with the vendor being uh, local. And also, I just wanted to make a point that they will take a trade-in, so we're gonna get some money, about a thousand five hundred, out of yes. out of the old factory. They'll take a trade-in. Yes. Get more money if we set it out right. Get a trade-in in it. Mm, I've, I've called a few people, but nobody. They said if it's not running, they will not. Make it run just for that other one. <laughs> he was the only person that, that told me that they would give me fifteen hundred for it. I had a motion, Councilman Tejano, second by Councilman Ortiz. Councilman Rodriguez, are you both?
to put into this line item so they can draw from this line item as they're making the draws because it's under construction right now. I'll make a motion to approve the budget amendment number six FDC ordinance number 2015-07. I have a motion by Councilman Gadero. May I have a second? Second,
Councilmember Hanna, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Lewis? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Adjourned at 9.35. Thank you, Councilmember.